Hey, welcome to another tutorial from Photoshop is Fun. Now today what I'm going to do is recreate one of my more popular videos on extraction. And the reason why I'm doing it is because um, in that original video I've had a lot of feedback that the audio in certain places was a little too low and difficult to follow. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just kind of update that with a newer version with hopefully better audio. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take Brie and we're gonna separate her from this blue background so that we can put her on top of any other background that we want to. Now, one thing I wanna say before we do get started is when you take your photograph in the first place, if you know that you're gonna extract either a person or an object from your photograph, think about how you compose it. In other words, it's best not to have a lot of visual noise behind your subject or um, you know colors that are very similar to maybe their skin tone or something they're wearing and things like that. You want to have a lot of contrasting edges and the more solid the background the easier this process is going to be and the more likely you're going to be successful at it. You're going to find that if you're trying to do this with um, uh, photographs that have really complicated backgrounds this is going to be difficult and you're not going to get the type of results that you want. So what I'm showing you today is definitely ideal I have a solid background. Um, I shot her in front of a blue background, um, which makes this a lot easier to do. But nonetheless, Photoshop has some very powerful tools, so let's just go ahead and get into them, and I'll show you how this works. So let's go ahead and start this process by arming ourselves with the quick selection tool, and that's this one right here. Now, if you don't see it um, under the uh, polygon lasso tool, then what you want to do is go ahead and click on um, the little uh, triangle in the corner, and then you should see a flyout menu that allows you to grab the quick selection tool. So go ahead and do that. And then what you want to do is just um, left click and you can hold it down even and um, just start going over the thing that you want to select. And then um, just continue to click on the areas that need to be selected. Now in this case what it did is it went ahead and selected um, all of this blue area here which I don't want it to do. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down the Alt key on Windows and I believe it's the Command key on Mac. And you can see that the cursor icon changed from a plus symbol to a um, uh, to a negative and then I want to just go ahead and select in that area that I want to deselect so now um, my model is just selected and everything else including the blue background is um, unselected and it's okay that some of these little hairs right in here and back here are unselected we're gonna take care of that in the next step okay so that next step is the refine edge step and um, oh, it looks like I missed a spot right here so to um, start that I'm gonna go up to the select menu and I'm gonna go down to refine edge which should bring up the refine edge menu here now as you can see it dropped it onto a white background or at least it took my selection and put it on a white background if I want to change that I go up to the view menu here and I can um, go ahead and select uh, the pink uh, background or over black or over white or a silhouette which is like a masking look or over no background altogether and then of course there's the original um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a white background and I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna tick the smart radius here in the edge detection and this just is the um, radius of the edge detection that I want and generally I'll do anywhere between two and eight and a half for most types of um, photographs and right now I'm gonna go ahead and do three and I can use the um, uh, zoom tool here if I'd like to zoom in or I could go ahead and do control plus sign and then this is the um, basically the grab tool and that'll allow me to kind of move my canvas around wherever I want and since I want to go up to the hair area here I'm gonna go ahead and um, zoom in on that and then next I'm gonna go ahead and select the um, refine edge tool a uh, refine radius tool so if you want to um, go ahead and select that as well what you want to do is have your brush size um, a little bit bigger than what I have here and to change that you can either um, go up here and select a different size or you can use your um, bracket keys uh, to go up and down to get a different size so I know that there's more hair in this area so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my um, uh, uh, refine radius tool to go around the edges here and um, I'm basically just gonna go on the contrasting line and um, just kinda go around here and then once I let go you'll see Photoshop recalculate these edges and you can see it did a great job right there um, it got a lot more of the fine hairs took out the blue etc so I'm gonna go ahead and hold down my spacebar which is essentially like selecting this 
um, hand tool temporarily. You can see the icon changes and that allows me to just kind of scroll down or um, uh, move down by grabbing the canvas and um, dragging. So I am going to keep this um, refine um, radius tool selected and then I'm going to go around the edges one more time just to make sure that everything's nice and tight. And you can see some more hairs got picked up here. I'm going to hold down the space bar, go all the way down, follow the line of her back, just to make sure that everything gets picked up nicely. Everything looks pretty good in here. And I know that I probably have some more hairs on this side, so I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, you can see right there that it picked some up. And hopefully it will um, be able to get them when I let go. And it did. You can see right there. It looks great. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to go over this part of the hat, this little paper hat here. I know has some um, strange edging to it. So I want to go back over it just to make sure that it gets selected pretty well. And overall, you can see it did a great job um, uh, for my first pass. So next, what I'm going to do is I am going to zoom out again by doing Control minus sign. And I'm going to do it one more time. And then I'm going to go down to the contrast slider. I find that the contrast slider really helps with some of my edges. And I am going to um, go up to around probably 10 for this particular image. Let me just show you the extreme. So if I go all the way up, you can see it gave me a really sharp contrasting edges, little um, uh, aliased or jaggedy. So we don't want that. So I'm going to go actually down to about uh, 11. Should be good. Yeah, that looks really tight. And then um, I also like to do a one on my smooth slider. And basically what that does is it gives me just a little bit of anti-aliasing on the edges so it doesn't look quite so harsh. But if you do too much, it um, gets really fuzzy and it kind of ruins the whole effect, especially as you get in close. Um, just to give you an idea, you can see right there how it looks when you do that. And it you know, it, it makes those nice, fine individual hairs kind of blur out like that, which we don't want. So again, I'm going to do this back down to one and uh, we will call that good. Now, lastly, um, because I used a blue background, this would be the same thing with um, either uh, colored lighting or a green background. If you're green screening or anything like that, you can see that there's a, um, a blue edge um, around my um, all the contrasting lines especially up in the hat area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on decontaminate colors and that'll help with that particular problem. And then I'm going to go ahead and slide this up to around 70. Let's see what that does. Um, so 78 is too far. You can see the red got a little weird. Let's do that. That's better. So if I were to take it off, you can see the difference. See the blue line there. And then when I turn it on, it gets a little bit better. Definitely not perfect, but um, uh, it absolutely helps as well. So the last thing that I want to do is the output. So I want to output this to a new layer with a new layer mask so that I can work with it and it doesn't impact anything else that I was doing. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to um, come back to 100% so that you can see it. Okay, so we have our subject, in this case Bree, separated from the background, and now we can pretty much place her on top of any background that we want. And just to give you kind of an example of how that might work, I have another file open, and I'm going to go ahead and do a Control A to select everything, and a Control C to copy it, and then I'm going to go back to the Bree file and do a Control V to paste it. And it'll paste it onto a new layer, which you can see over here, and it pasted it pasted it on top of Bree's layer. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it down below so that she's on top of it. And then you can see how this works. Now if I select the move tool and then the Bree layer and I can move her anywhere I would like um, over the new background. And maybe I want to do a control T and uh, make her a little bit smaller so she's not quite so big in the image and um, place her about right there, double click to unselect. And now obviously the lighting's wrong, so she was lit differently than this background was lit. And a lot of um, uh, you know toning, um, neutralizing would have to take place in order to composite this properly. But I just wanna give you an idea of how this would work. So that's how you basically extract either a subject or an object from your photographs. So go ahead and grab your own. And um, remember the next time you compose a shot specifically for doing that, that you compose 
compose it properly so that you make this as easy as possible when you get to the um, Photoshop part of the process. Till the next uh, tutorial, I will talk to you later.